which is consideration of resolution number 805, a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Mesquite, Nevada, adopting the 2013 update to the City Transportation Capital Improvement Plan. Mr. Seacrest. Good evening, Mayor, <clears throat> members of the City Council. The Transportation Capital Improvement Plan, or TCIP, is updated every three years for Nevada revised statutes. This update includes evaluating the current transportation system, um, projecting traffic volumes based on estimated new growth, and updating projects and costs and the fees associated with um, the improvements necessary to meet that new growth. Now this plan is a prerequisite to the implementation of impact fees Again, as stated in Nevada Revised Statutes, NRS 278B, impact fees for new development. This year, the city contracted with Atkins North America Consulting Engineers to work with the city on updating this uh, transportation plan. They did the modeling. They uh, did most of the, the work and working with the advisory committee and looking at the assumptions about new growth and putting the plan together. And with us tonight are Teresa Gaser and uh, Emily Kabachik from North America, uh, or from Atkins, North America. They're going to make a presentation to the council, uh, explain what's in the plan, the process we went through to get there, and what it all means for the city. Following uh, their presentation, we'll be happy to answer any questions that we can. And then we recommend opening the public hearing for comment and adopting the TCIP by approving Resolution 805. TCIP includes the following items. This is a brief presentation on what we will, um, on what is the TCIP, the purpose of it, the analysis that accompanied this process, what is actually included in this um, latest update of the TCIP, and the impact be updated in this TCIP. The TCIP is a short-term plan. It only covers a five-year span, the immediate five-year span, and it identifies potential improvements to the transportation system and identifies funding sources. The TCIP conforms with NRS for the Impact Fee Ordinance, which was implemented in 1997 in the city of Mesquite. The advisory committee is made up of at least five members. One member must be from real estate or development or the building industry within the city. The features of the CIP include a list of transportation projects, funding sources for these projects, the time frame that these projects will occur in, which in this case is a five-year window, and the justification for the need of these projects. The reason for this update is to facilitate implementation of planned improvements and to account for growth within the city. The analysis that's included to update this process through this process is done as a level of service analysis. This analysis includes the existing year that this update was performed, which is 2013. It identifies areas of potential growth within the city. It also examines the five-year window analysis period for the future, which is 2018 for this plan. 
It identifies the short-term transportation improvements, again, for that five-year window. And then from that information, the cost um, and impact fees are developed. Why do we use the level of service as the performance index for this project? Level of service is a rating system commonly used in traffic engineering. It measures the effectiveness of operating conditions on roadways and at intersections. Local, <clears throat> local level of service standards um, can be used to, to analyze the impacts of land use changes and growth on the roadway system and to measure system performance. Level of service ranges from A to F, and the city of Mesquite has adopted level of service B as their acceptable, level of service C <laughs> as their acceptable level of service for operations on their roadway and transportation facilities. Some of the ways to explain level of service C is it is described as noticeable congestion, traffic flow still occurs at near or at free flow speeds, however drivers may feel more restricted. If the system level drops below this adopted level of service, capacity improvements can be implemented to restore the level of service to the preferred operating conditions. The existing analysis within the City of Mesquite for 2013, and this was done through traffic count collection at local intersections and on all the local roadways, showed that all of the system, the intersections within the speed roadway system operated at acceptable levels of service. With the assistance of the city, staff, and the um, TCIP committee, identification of potential areas of growth within the city were identified for the next five year period, and these areas are starred on this map. The small stars indicate small growth in some of the areas, the larger stars indicate some of the low, more dense areas of growth. This is a current roadway network for the city of Mesquite, as well as future improvements for the city of Mesquite, or projected roadway improvements in the city of Mesquite. This map was used to help explain some of the areas where new roadway improvements might be necessary to meet the demands of the future growth. Roadway segments that are anticipated to be built within the next five year period were identified, again through assistance from the city and from the committee. And these items are shown on this map. Some of the streets include Hafen and Lower Flat Top. This gave us what we call additional service units or additional capacity to your existing roadway system. This is measured in a unit called VMT, which is Vehicles Mile Travel. So what this is saying is there's 2,900 new vehicle miles traveled projected to be added to the Mesquite roadway system in the next five years based on these improvements. There was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was one intersection that was identified as potentially falling below the acceptable level of service in the next five year period, and this was the Riverside and Haven intersection. The cost of signalization at this intersection is $500,000, that's a projected fee. This goes through the equation that is used to determine how the impact fee is created. It's the cost of the new um, improvement to meet the level of service criteria divided by the new capacity that is supplied. This gives you a cost of $173 per VMT. This next equation steps you through which amount of that cost is associated to new growth in those areas that were identified. And through this equation you'll see that the new VMT is brought down to $43.25 per vehicle mile traveled. For an example of what this means in terms of the impact fee schedule that a lot of people are familiar with, um, a single family detached house would be, um, is weighted at a VMT per unit of 1.17, 
when you multiply that by the new cost of BMT, you come up with a net cost of $50.60. You know, I rushed through a lot of material there, and that summed up um, about six months of work as a team. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them at this time. I think we can hold, wait for the uh, public hearing, and then we'll call you back up for the questions. Yeah, if that's okay with you. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and open the public hearing then on agenda item 11 at this time. Those wishing to make public comment, please step forward, state your name. Remember, there is a three minute limit. My name is Barbara Ellisad, as a private citizen who lives in Sunset Greens. Um, there were three roads identified, and it was pretty fast selling. Um, one of them was No Name Road associated with Sunset Greens. One was Haven Road, Sunset Greens to Ben Franklin. Um, could I get a little bit more explanation about those particular? two particular roadways and what the why they were on the list I guess and if they are destined for uh, improvements and what kind of improvements. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, I have a legal question. No name road is on private property and I'm associated with that. Do I need to recuse myself from this? Yes, if there are questions. Or accuse myself. Also, can I make a statement before we go any further? Mm -hmm. Just that the council cannot make any decisions about no name road. I just want to make it clear because it is a private road. It's never been dedicated. So, just so the council remembers that. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, that, I guess, I guess that's why my, my, one of my questions is why No Name Road was on the list, because it is a private road, but the city doesn't own it, the state doesn't own it, and so I'm not certain how any public funds could be used to do anything with that road. Um, so I guess that's one of the questions I had about no name road. And then the, the other question is what kind of improvements were from Haven Lane over to Ben Franklin, because that's quite a stretch around, I, I don't know how you get from Haven Lane to Ben Franklin without a whole lot of going through my golf course. <laughs> 